Hello and happy Sunday. This is Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com and today is Sunday, July the 29th. This is about it. We're about to wrap up July. I will warn you as you start popping on here, we have a mel of a hess going on out here. If you've never heard that, sorry. Uh, Weather-wise, so we had two weeks of nearly no rain and now we're getting all the rain. So sadly, it's going to be a little bit noisy in the background and hopefully... Hopefully no thunder or lightning, but the thunderstorm is supposed to start now. It's supposed to start at 8 o'clock. Anyway, hello everybody. Hello, hello, hello and happy Sunday. Hello, Elaine. If you are new, we would love for you to let us know. Hello, Catherine, so that we can welcome you. If you're watching this over on YouTube later, that's just YouTube.com. Search if you have an egg. I would also love to welcome you over there. People have stopped talking on YouTube. That is the weirdest thing to me. And hello, Mary. Hello, Lynn. Good to see you. So again, as you're popping in here... It is nasty outside today. Hello, Marianne. Hello, Anna. No rain for like two weeks, two, two and a half weeks. And I think my friend Karen said we've already gotten two and a half inches today, just today. And there's a thunderstorm that was supposed to start like right now, like at eight o'clock. And hello, Carol Lou. And hello, Sarah from Rowley, Massachusetts. And she sent me a video right before we started. Dollywood is flooded. Yeah, so if Dollywood is flooded, that's a lot of rain coming down. And let's see, hello, Sherry. Thank you very much. This is a Walmart find. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So, yeah, I'm not complaining about the heat today, just complaining about the water. And two weeks ago, I was complaining about how dry it was. I'm never satisfied, am I? Okay, today is Sunday. This is July 29th. We are just about, just about to wrap up July. It is just about a wrap. So, hopefully, everybody is starting to get ready to go back to school um, I know Alyssa would go today. If I saw the principal for her school at Kroger and I contained myself, I really, really, really wanted to walk over and go, you know, um, if y'all would start school tomorrow, Alyssa would be there. She would totally be there. And hello, Orlando Debbie, because she would. But I, but you know, I resisted the urge. Let's see. And Carol Lou says, send the rain our way. Grass is brown and dead. Ours was too a couple of days ago. And fortunately, John went ahead and mowed it because, yeah. We just have torrential torrential rain now. You just can't, you know, it's just either completely dry or completely rainy. You can't have it in between. But I know the cucumbers and squash will love it. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're winding down um, July. I know a couple of the school systems here in, in our area in East Tennessee have already gone back to school. And then many, many more will be going back next week and the week after that. So, I'm not winding down the summer veggies, though, because I finally have I was a few weeks late starting my garden and I finally have a plethora literally a plethora of vegetables um so we will be talking about that again in the second half a little bit of news to begin with this is our last news for July of 2024 the first thing is today is the start of the drink water challenge hosted by Julie over on the if you have an egg group so Julie's well rested I don't know I hope I hope she's trying to get ready because school is getting ready to start in their area soon. So she did feel like going ahead and hostessing a um, a challenge this week. It's a lot of work being a volunteer. I don't know if y'all know that or not, but she completely volunteers for that, um, for that challenge and keeps it up every single day and then tries to respond to every single person. So, you know, y'all give, give Julie some kudos for that. But she is back up and running and um, thank you for letting her take a little break last week. She needed it. Um, but the this week is the drink water challenge and remember it's not a contest so you're not competing with somebody it's a challenge just is for you to challenge yourself hey maybe if i'm drinking one glass of water a day maybe i could up it to two or to six or to eight it's just a little challenge for yourself hello sandra from, Ding from dingman's ferry and aloha kathy um it's just a little challenge for yourself and it's also a way for others to encourage you and keep you going so that's the challenge over in the if you have an egg facebook group this week if you are not in our Facebook group already. One of these lovely ladies will surely post the um, the link so that you can go over there and ask to join. Just remember to answer the three questions. I didn't have to delete anybody this week. So good job everybody on answering your questions. I did not have to decline anyone this week. <sighs> it was such a relief. So please answer those three questions. Second little bit of news um, for thank you to everyone who um, used my affiliate links during the um, during Amazon Prime Day. I guess it was last week or two weeks ago. And hello, Vicky. But thank you to all of you all. I have earned a whopping $26. I told you it's a teeny, teeny, tiny amount. But um, I've earned $26 from you all clicking 
you know, on those prom day events. So I really do appreciate that. Um, and I have found something super fun for us to try when we reach about 40. So once we've reached about $40 um, in affiliate earnings, I've got something, I've got my eye on something um, that I want us to try, but we need to earn just a little bit more, you know, on those affiliate clicks. Also, I'm working on an Amazon wish list. Several of you suggested, you know, hey, I might want to buy something, a little something, you know, to be tried out during the chat. So I have started an Amazon wish list, and the link to that will be posted. Thank you, Debbie. Orlando Debbie has posted the link to the um, Facebook group. But I'll be posting the link to, or Casey will be posting the link to the Amazon wish list in this week's chat. So when you go after, let's see, tomorrow I know she has to work at her actual job. So maybe by about Tuesday when she posts this chat on www.ifyouhaveanegg.com, you should be able to find an Amazon link. Um, and that's just to the Amazon wish list. And it's for this group. So thank you, for, thank you for every, you know, for all of your support and for anybody who wants to participate. You absolutely do not have to buy anything. But if you thought, hey, you know what? I'd like to see Kelly try out X, Y, or Z. And it's on her wish list. I'm going to go ahead and order it. We would certainly appreciate it. The last thing is this, I have finished week three of the Biome of Probiotics um, trial period. And I have enough to do this for at least a couple of months, at least two months, I'm pretty sure, is what they sent me. I'm still going well. It's still going really well. The changes are very noticeable now. We have moved on from um, exceeding my normal C um, with number one trips to the bathroom. We've moved on to number two. Just saying, if you're having problems in that area also, you might want to give this a try. Uh, they assure me that, when I, that I will start seeing actual results. I don't know what the actual results will be though. Because, I mean, I'm already seeing, you know, just some different things. I'm telling you, the bloated feeling is gone and it is so fantastic. Um, but they tell me that I'll really, really start seeing results, whatever results are, after about a month. So maybe about another weekend and I'll have something different to report. There is also an affiliate code for that. And if you uh, checked out last week's chat um, or when you check out this one, there is a link to their website, to the Bioma Health website and to the probiotic in particular. And if you um, use my affiliate code, you'll get 15% off of your order and I'll get a teeny tiny bit of money. Hello, Joycelyn, to use for more of this. Thank goodness, thank goodness about the time that, um, about the time that John's pay went, that our chat budget got, you know, kind of got cut. Thank goodness that's about the time that all of this started coming in from the garden or we wouldn't have had chat topics for the last couple of weeks. Okay, so that is it for the little bit of news. Next, I need to know, hello, Hattie, who sat their bottom in a little chair, who went to an in-person workshop last week? Give me a thumbs up if you did that. Or if you attended a Zoom workshop, give me a thumbs up for that. I know several of y'all are still going to um, Gwen's Thursday Zoom meetings. My schedule has not worked out to be there lately. So thumbs ups for in-person workshops or virtual workshops. And let me see some hearts for uh, being here with us last week or if you watch later on demand. Oh, yep, there goes the the large thing of hearts. Yeah, awesome, guys. Y'all are doing a great job as you're winding down summer. And there's Anne. Anne was looking cute at WW last week. Good job. There's lots of y'all went. Bravo stickers to everyone who went to an in-person workshop, did a Zoom workshop, or, oh, and Mary's bottom was in a green chair again. We've got to get some green chairs so we can say that too because that used to be the thing. Um, yep, and yep, Sarah was here with us last week and this week. But yeah, bravo, everyone. Good job. Good job, ladies. Y'all are kicking it. Y'all are still kicking it this summer. Okay. Last week was chat number 373. Oh, and you know it. If you, I just wish you could see how, how cute your little smile is. But anyway, last week was chat number 373, and we were talking about questions that you should ask yourself to stay on track. And I know in my example, I was saying, you know, like sitting at a drive through thinking that you know what you're going to get, and this little voice goes, get the French fries. The french fries are extra, they're extra hot, and they're extra salty today. And you know that's a lie. That is a lie. If you're, if you're in a, the line for a fast food restaurant, there ain't nothing special about it anymore. So, I told you to ask yourself three questions. One of the questions when something like that happens is, what are my thoughts right now? So, you know, what, what were you actually thinking about right then? So, if, you know, because I, I know the thought wasn't really hot, extra salty, because fast food is not. So it was probably something like, ah, well, you were going to have to get a salad or you were going to have to get yogurt or whatever. While everybody else is sitting around eating fun fast food, 
that's probably what, you know, probably was the thought that was actually going through, you know, going around in my head. That was the actual thought. Um, and then the second question was, how do these thoughts make you feel? Like, how do they make me feel? How do they make you feel? And how does that impact your journey? Usually, it doesn't make me feel bad or it doesn't make me feel weird till after I've partaken in whatever it was. So in that frost scenario, I was thinking, oh man, I'm such a loser. I'm so weak. Why do I do this every time? Why do I pull up to the drive-thru knowing what I'm going to get? Why do I pull up to the drive-thru? Maybe that should be my first question. Um, and then the third thing was, how can I shift this story? What could happen differently to help me to shift this story? Um, so life happens. It's going to happen to me. It's going to happen to you. It happens to us every single day. But to shift this story, you have to... You, have, you don't have to let it happen to you, okay? Life happens, but you don't have to let it, ha let it happen to you. So in this fry scenario, a couple of things I could have done. One is just to get the French fries, count them, and move on, okay? A second one is get the fries, and if they're not as hot, as hot and salty as my brain adverts, that little voice advertised, maybe I should just throw them away instead of eating them. And then the third thing was, remember that I have French fries in my freezer and I restocked today and I can make them in the air fryer when I get home and they are super hot and they're as salty as I want. So I asked you last week to think of ways that you could hashtag shift that story and do your homework. And I, I heard some good ones this week. First one was sweet little Ann that we were just talking about. She answered during the chat last week. She has already shifted her, her um, story by going ahead and placing that order, that drive through order, going ahead and placing that on a mobile app. Hello, that's hard to change, except at Chick-fil-A. They will ask you if you need to make any changes, but if you go ahead and make, if you go ahead and order that on the app, you're kind of committed to it. And when you place that order on the app, you could go ahead and track it at the same time. A little bit harder to listen to that little voice if you've already, if you've already put it in the app and you've already paid for it. So that was a good one, Anne. Thank you for reminding me about that. Then Catherine still wanted to be able to have her um, her treats at the movies. So she's been going to the movies, which made me want to go to the movies. Um, but she still wanted to have her treats at the movies. But buying them there was just a broken record for her of bad decisions. So waiting till she got to the movie theater, it was a literal, you know, bad, just a broken record of bad decisions, you know, getting there and then making bad decisions. So she shifted her story by purchasing Smart Sweets. And she had Lily's treats. They were uh, gummy bears. So have you all heard of Smart Sweets? I've seen them, and I've seen them in the store, but I haven't actually tried them. Um, that is one of the ones that, um, that, that's one of the things that's on my, on that Amazon wish list I'm going to share. Um, Lily's is a favorite with us. That is a, um, it's a line of what I've been purchasing, sugar-free um, chocolates and some just interesting kind of cho chocolates, chocolate chips, different kinds of chips, not always just chocolate. Um, but that's what Catherine did is she bought those and then she bought them in little individual packages and she act and she wrote on there, she wrote the points on them also. So good job, Catherine. That was a smart idea. And then an opportunity to shift my story happened to me today. Like it literally happened to me today. Um, I came into our office here. So I'm at work. This is where I work. This is Casey Kitchen Center. I'm a kitchen designer and we sell cabinets. We sell countertops. This is not my normal job. Doing these chats is not my normal job, but because this is a convenient place for me to have them, I've got all of my equipment is here, all of my cooking things are here, and because of that, every single Sunday, when we almost every single Sunday when we have a chat, I come in on Sunday and work for hours getting ready for the chat. It's a quiet day, no one wants my attention, we're not technically open, so Today, I came into the office just like I do every other Sunday to prep some food, get ready for the chat. Um, but the business partner who runs the cabinet side decided that she was going to come in and rearrange some displays today. And she brought a helper with her, and they had power tools. And then it started raining, so they had to stay up and in here the entire time. And I thought, oh, here we go. Here we go. Because my normal story, my old story before last week's chat story would have been to skip my plans, go over and help, get sucked into this unscheduled event, and then scramble and not be ready for our chats. Okay, you're welcome, Sarah. And just absolutely not be ready for our chats. 
So I shifted my story this week because I was paying attention last week. I shifted my story this week and just said, oh yeah, nope, that's gonna look good. I'll come check it out when y'all are done. And I kept standing over here and prepping my stuff for tonight. And then I moved, so I made it obvious that I was getting ready for this and that I couldn't, like I wasn't gonna stop, that, it, what, that I made it look like what I was working on that I couldn't stop it. And then I went to a computer in the back room so that I couldn't even see them and they couldn't see me. When they were done, I came out, said, yep, looks good, see y'all later. So I shifted my story and let's see, Debbie's tattling something on me. I can, oh, thank you, Debbie. I thought you were telling a, I thought you were telling a story on me. Debbie says, I can testify how much work Kelly puts in these chats, she is so organized. I don't know if organized is the right word. So a lot of time and effort, yes. But I don't know if organized is, is quite the way. Yeah, thank you, Debbie. I do appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so I shifted my story. I didn't get in the middle of the mix. It was hard, but I shifted it. So bravo to everyone um, who did their homework this week. I am so proud of you all. Y'all are awesome and amazing. This week, we are talking about how to, how to use our strengths to stay on track. And this was a perfect week for this topic. So last week we, leading into tonight was a perfect time to have this topic. So I haven't been able to watch much of the Olympics yet because I don't have, I think it's Paramount Plus that you have to have in this area if you don't already have um, WBR, or the local channel that's carrying it. Um, and I don't have that. So I haven't been able to see much of the Olympics so far, but I do know enough about the Olympics in 2024, 2020, 20. 16, whatever the you know, prior years are, what, whatever years they are, I do know enough about the Olympics to realize that you don't get to this point. So none of the people that are in Paris got to this point in the competition by not knowing what their strength, what their strengths are, okay? So they, they have to know that before they can get to that level of, you know, of competition. So obviously, obviously none of us are over in Paris right now. I don't think. I don't think any of you are watching this from Paris. So none of us are over there competing right now, but tonight we are going to find out how to, how to identify and then use those Olympic size superpowers that we have, okay? So here are some pro tips for learning how finding your superpower and then how to use your superpower. So first one is stop, don't think. So just stop what you're doing, like literally stop what you're doing don't think, which is hard for most of us, this is where you don't overthink what I'm getting ready to ask you, okay? Just kind of clear your mind, clear your mind and don't overthink this. So just stop, don't think, and then go. Tell me something that you're good at. So hurry, fast, 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 fast. Hurry, hurry, don't think, don't overthink it. Stop what you're doing and real quick, go, 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 go. Tell me something that you were good at, weight related or not. Kitchen related or not, food related or not. Go, 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 go. Sarah says typing. Very good. That's a good one. Tell me something that you're good at. Catherine says planning. Maybe it's color coding your grocery list. Anne says organization. Great. Maybe it's keeping a schedule. Okay, so say this out loud because you're gonna need it later, okay? Melissa says baking. Carol Lou says cooking. And Melissa, I meant to say Tuesday night. I was going to say cheerleading because you're cheerleading. Cheerleading is one of your superpowers, okay? Lynn says support, and you're exactly right. Pam says helping others. Exactly right. Debbie says applications and IT support. Fantastic. Sherry says planning. And Sandra says cleaning. Cleaning. You can come on over. You can come on over to my house. Okay. So second thing is, and don't, don't stop telling me what you're, don't stop telling me something that you're good at. Second thing is, what Olympic sport would you compete in if you could? So that's the next thing I want y'all just to spout off. And people who are watching this chat later, when I start, when I'm reading these out loud, they're going to think, what were they even talking about? <laughs> or if they just go back and look at the comments, they're not going to have any idea what we were talking about. So we actually had somebody, I asked this question. Um, ooh, Vicky says digital scrapbooking. That sounds like fun. We actually had somebody in our, if you have an egg Facebook group this week that when I asked what Olympic sport you would compete in, if you could, she said, um, that's, not, that's not even WW related. So obviously, she does not know me very well yet, does she? Because everything I talk about is WW related, okay? So Melissa says swimming, Suzette says pickleball. Ooh, Suzette, you need to come and teach me how to do that. Marianne, it drives me crazy. 
that it cuts off what you say every week because I can't see it. Somebody tell me what Marianne said because every week, because her name's so long, it cuts part of it off. Sarah says, synchronized swimming. Oh, yeah. Looks hard, but fun. That does look fun. That does look fun. Anne says swimming for her as well. And my friend, my friend, his name is Christy, but I call her my Christy. My Christy said swimming, but she can only swim left. And I said, well, it could be like a NASCAR swimming or something, you know. Um, yeah, so it's all WW related. Okay, keep shouting those out. And then, oh wait, I want to see a couple more. So pickleball, is that an actual Olympic sport? Is pickleball an Olympic sport? I didn't even know that. I know swimming is, synchronized swimming is. Let's see what else you got. Lynn had said, oh, Lynn says gymnastics. So Lynn, what was the ribbon thing you were talking about over in our group? And Debbie says, for Olympics, my carrier has on-demand channel over the Olympics to watch again. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Sarah says, some gymnastics wish I had their bodies. Karen says, break dancing. So Karen, is break dancing an Olympic sport? And Sherry says, canoeing. Is that an Olympic sport? Yeah. Okay. So, and it's totally fine. It's all open. It's all out for interpretation. So there is, I'm not taking it off the list if it, if it isn't really an Olympic sport. Okay. Now, I want you to channel. Oh, yeah. She says it is new. Awesome. Okay. So now, though, I want you to channel. So just think about. Oh, Carol, do ice skating or dancing would be fun. Wait, canoeing is. Oh, Debbie says canoeing and dragon racing. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Okay, now I really wish that we could get it streaming. Um, but now I want you just to take a breath and go back to the first question. Because remember, I told you you would need it later. What we do have in common with the athletes in Paris is a desire to win. So no one, no one in Paris competing right now, zero people in Paris competing right now are over there saying, yeah, you know, I just came to check it out. I just came for the experience, you know. I didn't really want to win, you know. I just, you know, I don't know. I was just, you know, just, I was break dancing at, you know, at my local gym or I was playing pickleball at my local gym, you know, and I don't know, the Olympic Committee, they just came by and they just grabbed me, you know. Or I was canoeing or, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, no, no one, no one in Paris is just, eh, it's just kind of there for, you know, for kicks. It's just kind of there because I thought it would be fun, you know, fun to attend. They're there to win, okay? They're there to win a gold medal. And if they don't win a gold medal, they'll accept a silver medal and maybe accept a bronze medal. And uh, Gwen told us something very interesting Tuesday night. The person getting the gold medal, super, super excited. I worked hard for this. I deserve it. The person, the next most excited person is the person winning the bronze because usually they were just good enough to get a medal. Just good enough. And the person that wins silver is like, oh, I wasn't good enough. I was almost good enough to win gold. Almost good enough. Um, so she said, yeah, that person that's winning second place that they are not, that they're not usually the most excited because, you know, they were almost good enough for gold. They got silver. Okay, so again, what we do have in common with these people is, with the people in Paris is, we're here to win, okay? I don't think any of us are here because we think, eh, yeah, okay, I was bored on a Sunday, didn't have anything else to do for an hour, so I thought I'd call and just, just come and just, you know, listen to Kelly, just, you know, meander on, you know, incessantly about, you know, some other subject. We're here because we want to win. Maybe we want to win our weight loss. Maybe we want to win our health goal. Maybe we want to win not taking as much medication. Maybe we want to win mobility. Um, honestly, no. Hello, Barbara. I honestly know some people who joined Weight Watchers because they wanted to be able to walk without assistance again. Not be in a wheelchair, not be on a walker. They wanted to be able to walk well with minimal assistance, maybe with just like a cane, but not like not have to be in a scooter all the time or whatever. That is a win. So we're here, whether it's winning weight, winning mobility, winning health, winning less medication, winning a gold star from your doctor, a gold medal from your doctor, we're here to win, okay? So whatever your heart's desire is, whatever your heart's desire is um, for this journey, um, that's it, we're here to win it. So now go back to that original question and uh, about something that you're good at. So scroll back up 
scroll back up to what your to that original answer that you gave and decide is that your superpower so is being organized your superpower is being a cheerleader is that your superpower so what is what is your superpower um, and then I want you so Sherry says planning so if, if planning is Sherry's superpower I want her to get a sticker a name tag just a piece of paper tape it on her shirt something that says um, and I want you to declare my superpower is and a line and then write what that is <gasps> and shocker that's your homework you knew that was coming so your homework is hashtag my superpower hashtag m y s u p e r p o w e r i s so my superpower is and lynn i am lynn always types this and that's a lot let me slow down hashtag my superpower is M Y S U P E R P O W E R I S. Okay, Sarah is staying with typing. That's fantastic because if you're a quick typer, you could type up yourself a menu. Um, you could type yourself a letter. You could do you could do something great with that. And Sherry says my superpower is planner. I'm a good planner. She can use that. Maybe she's going to use that to make a menu. Maybe she's going to use that to plan out what she's going to um, eat for the week. Um, and that is a long one, yeah. Um, but yeah, but hashtag my superpower is, and let us know what that is. It would be super cute. Wow, Lynn, you got it. So Lynn's superpower must be fast thumbs. That must be one of her superpowers. I know that being a motivational and good friend is one of her superpowers. So I'll go ahead and make Lynn sticker. My superpower is... Um, generosity is kindness is support actually Lynn's got a lot of superpowers okay so that is your homework for this week do your homework do your homework do your homework um, I want to see everybody it would be super cool if you you know if you felt so led if you would make the little sticker or like the you know like the hello my name is instead it said my superpower is that would be super awesome if you could do that you do not have to you can just type it like Sherry just did um, but yeah do your homework everybody your homework's so easy this week it's like, it would be ridiculous. It would just be sad if you did not do your homework because it's so, it's just so easy this week. Okay. So I've been talking a mile a minute. I don't know if you've noticed. It's raining, but no storm. So whoever was praying for no storm during the chat and no loss of power or internet, good job. You nailed it. Okay. Um, yeah, and Sarah says she feels like she already did it. That is awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and segue to the second half because I have so much to talk about. Um, for those of you who are new, we're going to, yep, Sandra, it is. We're going to stop for just a second and we're going to drink some water. Oh, and Lynn says it's 30 plus years as a med medical transcriptionist. That's, yeah, you can tell. She's got like fast thumbs. So we're going to stop and just take a little break. Everybody drink some water. This is the only time all week that I know that you drank water. And guess what? Ironically or coincidentally or whatever you want to call it, this week is the Drink More Water Challenge over on the If You Have an Egg group. So everybody get you some water. And it's rained out there enough today. I probably could just go, you know, get some water outside. Just kidding. Okay, everybody get a drink. Okay, and I'm going to tell you, well, this is, we're getting ready to start the second half of, of chat number 374, um, and we were, ta we're talking about how to use your strength, so like what your superpower is. I'm going to say my superpower is not eating the same food over and over again, okay? That is one of the things that we talked about um, Tuesday night. My superpower is... Um, not, not adding extra things to my plate. Obviously, you know, I don't know, an idle mind. I don't know. So I love extra things, but I think one of my superpowers is even though I will not eat the same things over and over and over again, and I won't make anything that's super hard. I think one of my super superpowers is making fun food. So already this, well, let me tell you this first. Um, Earlier today, someone told me or told a group of us that they had so many exciting things to talk about 
over the next couple of weeks. And this is completely not related to what we're doing. But this person said that they had so many exciting things to talk about over the next couple of weeks that they, and I hope you all find this as funny as I did, they feel, they feel like, or they felt like a mosquito at a nudist colony, okay? Do you get it? Do you understand it? It took me just a minute, but they said, oh, not too bad for the first trial with no glasses on. Um, but they said they felt like a mosquito at a nudist colony. So many opportunities, so many opportunities, and they just didn't know where to start. So that got me tickled, and I have thought about that all day long. Tonight, this week, I feel like a mosquito at a nudist colony because there are so many things. So We've done so many things this week, none of which was hard. Um, no, yeah, exactly. None of which was hard. None of which took a lot of time because y'all know my days are like completely filled. So none of it was hard. None of it took a lot of time. All of it was fun. Um, most of it was well received. Most of it was delicious and well received. Not all of it. But just since last Sunday, we've made, so I, I do, I feel like a mosquito at a nudist colony because we made salsa last Sunday night, which I know, I know I still owe y'all that recipe. Then on Monday, Casey and I made zucchini muffins um, with Kodiak cakes. They turned out fantastically. I loved them. Casey loved them. Alyssa loved them until she saw me shredding more zucchini, and now she hates them. Not gonna, I'm not lying. Not going to sugarcoat it. She, she loved them, and then she saw me shredding zucchini and was like, nope, mm -mm, no, won't, nope, can't do it. Bo liked them, but I think... I think what, what Bo didn't like is they were full-size muffins. Um, let's see. Alan wouldn't even touch them because he also saw the shredded zucchini, which is ridiculous. Like, he wouldn't even try it. Um, John loved them. He had them for breakfast with a cup of coffee every morning this week. Okay, that was another thing we did this week. Then um, Lily came back from, uh, from her vacation, and she missed the whole salsa thing. So Saturday, we made more salsa boom just like that um i don't know we just had a lot going on this week so again i feel like a mosquito at a nudist colony and it's the last time i'm gonna say that but i thought it was hilarious okay so last week we made salsa mm -hmm, mm -hmm, which i know I, I owe you the recipe and do you does anybody remember what i said we were going to advance to this week so uh two weeks ago or three weeks ago we were talking about pickling oh no so is Carmen posting Facebook groups that we don't? Uh, let's see. So Carmen, I, honey, I don't know what you're posting about, but if it has nothing to do with, if it has nothing to do with what you're currently talking about, uh, let's see, I'm gonna call it spam and we're gonna take just a quick break and we are going to ban her and we're going to hide everything from her. So, Carmen, if you're a real person, I'm so sorry because I just banned you. Oh, you're not. You are so not. Oh, I hate it when they do that. So, if you all don't mind, just to delete those comments, um, I put on there that we need that they needed to be hidden. Um, but yeah, y'all may have to go through and delete them. And hopefully, I will not... Um, accidentally delete anything that you all are saying. Give me just a second. Okay. Okay. I think I got her. Okay. Yeah. Carol Lou says she made zucchini bread today, but she used almond flour. That sounds really good. Okay. So two or three weeks ago, we did quick pickles. Last week we did salsa, which is basically a garden vegetable relish. I mean, salsa doesn't have to just be jalapenos and, um, tomatoes, even though that's what we classically think of salsa because that's what they bring you table side, you know, at the, um, at the Mexican restaurant. But I said this week that we were going to talk about anybody, anybody, everybody's gone, grown so quiet since Carmen kind of, um, kind of broke into the party. Do you remember what I said we were going to talk about? Somebody's going to have to answer pretty quickly. Oh, while I'm waiting on one of you to answer, look what I, else I started working on. I started working on, um, mm -hmm, yeah, uh, sun-dried tomatoes. I didn't follow the directions that I had. I've got four books checked out from the library right now about how to preserve all this plethora, uh, again, of tomatoes that we have. Um, 
Yeah, we did pickled watermelon rinds. That's exactly right. But that's not what we're talking about tonight. Mm -mm. Um, but I decided to try sun-dried tomatoes. Did not follow the directions that was that was found in three of the four books. So I had to I had to oil pack these um, because yeah because I didn't quite follow their directions. Lynn's exactly right. Okay, but don't those look yummy? And I can take them take them out and pat them off and not have too many you know points. Lynn's exactly right. Tonight we're talking about fermenting. So two years ago at least two years ago, probably three years ago, I got all these kits. I actually have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. So back before we had the budget cuts, I got six fermenting kits because I was gonna ferment everything, all of it. Every, everything that I could touch, all of it and go crazy. And then I just got completely overwhelmed. Um, it, I decided I was gonna learn how to ferment, pickle, um, pressure can, water bath can. I was gonna learn how to do all of it in one summer. And so a girl named Kendall and I, Kendall that used to work for me, we bought a, like a bushel, I think it was a, probably a bushel, maybe it was a half a bushel. It was a lot of green beans. Um, and then we bought a bushel of corn and then we got like two gallons of peaches and then and then and then and then and then and it was an epic fail. We ended up just having to eat the green beans because we, we, we had too much stuff at one time. Like we got all the things and it was just too much. It was too much at one time. Ended up freezing the corn, which is perfect because I like, I like the corn blanched and frozen anyway. But this year I decided two things. That's it. I'm gonna master two things. I'm gonna get my garden planted. I'm gonna plant things that I can do these two things with. I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna take it easy. And the two things that I wanted to master this summer were pickling, which I'm getting really good at. And um, Alyssa has eaten all of the pickles that I've given her, all of them. Um, so I'm getting really good at pickling. I did make the salsa, it was perfection. So um, I'm taking it to the next level today. And now I'm working on fermenting. So I think I've got a really, again, I think I've got a really good handle on the pickling. I mean, I've even bought some different pickling spices. Um, I've tried some different things. So now we're working on fermenting. So the salsa went over so well, and it was so good because it was fresh. You know, it didn't come out of a can. You didn't cook it first. It was so fresh that I decided to, and I'm gonna gently move this over here because it has water in the top. I decided to try fermenting some salsa. So this is exactly the same um, and yes, Debbie, there is there was zucchini in my salsa. Yes, ma'am. Um, but I decided to try the same thing. So this was exactly the same salsa recipe, but I did. And Lynn, I have not tried pickling green beans yet because my, I have I got exactly three green beans off of the green beans that I planted. <laughs> like seriously, three. The vines look beautiful. Yeah, three green beans. So I have not tried pickling green beans. I'm only using things that I, I'm trying to only use things that I've gotten out of the garden um, or like I had to buy garlic because I didn't I didn't grow any garlic. Um, ooh, ooh, Carol Lou. Honey, you're gonna have to talk, talk to me. Carol Lou says her son is into fermenting and she got him a few kits for Christmas. Okay, this one is a chew -a me And I don't know if y'all remember or not, three years ago, I tried to talk to y'all about this, but I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I didn't understand why we were while we were doing what we were doing i just didn't get it i just i just hurry 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 you have to learn how to ferment like now you got it you have to master it in like one week that's not gonna happen so i'm starting with two things that i've already mastered see look at me rewriting my story so i'm doing my homework again from last week so instead of just getting overwhelmed and confused and trying too much too fast too whatever i'm taking two things that i've already perfected which are salsa and pickled cucumbers and now i'm going to try fermenting them so this is exactly the same um this is exactly the same salsa recipe that i used but i did find online that to do to ferment with with a salsa recipe i needed to add some more salt so this is the same salsa recipe that you don't have yet Seriously? Why are we so popular? Why are we so popular tonight that we've got two people who are trying to 
uh, hone in on our fun. So hold on just a second and let's try to get rid of that. Let's get rid of a couple of this person's comments. And if y'all don't mind helping me to delete them, that would be great because we've got so much to talk about that I feel like, I know I said I wasn't going to say it again. We've got so much to talk about that I feel like y'all know what I was going to say. Okay, so let's get rid of all the scammy people. Thank you all for putting up with them. Um, but this is the same salsa recipe. What I didn't understand three years ago is that pickling requires requires um, vinegar. So thank you, Lynn. That pickling requires vinegar um, to do the pickling process. So to make vegetables um, and things like that, to make them taste that kind of tart, sour um, taste, it requires vinegar. And you have to have 5% vinegar. I did find that out. Um, you can use um, apple cider vinegar. But anyway, so I, I found that out. What I didn't, so I've, I've already learned that this year. What I've been learning from reading these other four, I'm going to return one of the books tomorrow. It wasn't that good. It was a bunch of fruity recipes that ain't none of us going to go. I mean, like 17 ingredients. I'm returning it tomorrow. It was too much, too much. But things that I didn't understand three years ago when I tried this is that the reason that this little chew of me is made like this is because the fermenting process doesn't require any um, it doesn't require any vinegar. This is a lacto fermenting, so this is actually making lactic acid, which is what's going to create kind of the bubbles, and it's going to, it, when it ferments the vegetables, that's what's going to give them that tart, tangy taste, like the vinegar does if you pickle, but this is actually good for you. This is a good, remember we've been talking about probiotics, we've been talking about, um, my bioma health probiotics that I've been taking. And one of the things they said, first thing was don't drink any coffee. Eh, ew, ugh. You know, I'm going to have to go with the, oh, results may vary thing because I wasn't going to quit drinking coffee. But the second thing was they encouraged you to eat, or encouraged me to eat yogurt, which I do every day, um, fermented things and other things that have good, good probiotics in them. So again, perfect time, timing. All these planets just aligned to go around the sun at exactly the same time. So fermenting fell perfectly in line with starting week four. So this is a lacto-fermented salsa recipe. I promise as soon as I get the actual salsa recipe up, like my salsa recipe up, then I will start working on this one. But I did borrow some advice from um, Farmhouse on Boone. So there's a website called Farmhouse on Boone. And these are like the people I want to be when I grow up because they're doing all this um, self, uh, self-preservation, not necessarily self-preservation, but you know what I mean, like living on the land, you know, kind of things. So I borrowed a few things from their, salt, their lacto-fermented salsa recipe, added, kept it going with my own salsa recipe, and we're only on day two. So according to Boone or Farmhouse on Boone, I should be able to try this on let's see just a couple more days so in just a couple more days I should be able to try this and see if it's the flavor that I want if it is then I can remove this device from the top that I'll explain here in just a second um, and I can put the uh, just the sealer lid on and keep it in the refrigerator for three to four months I'm telling you this also won't make it three or four months it'll make it like a week but I just wanted to make sure to see if I could perfect it so second thing that I didn't know I didn't understand the whole vinegar versus lactic acid thing. I got it now. I got it. Second thing was, I didn't know what this lid was about. So, the, the books I've been reading about fermenting are talking about crocs and burping them. And, oh, you can use a jar, but you have to do this if you use a jar. And on and on and on and on. So, this ring, this this lid, and I can't take I can't take it off of this one. I'll show you when we make the next thing. Um, but the way this ring works right now, it has a plunger with pressure on it. And if you can see that, and I'll show you when I make the next thing, that is keeping everything except what I accidentally let through, but it's keeping all of the chopped up vegetables for the salsa below the brine. So it's keeping it below that, and that's just, that's extra salt, extra salt water. So it's keeping it below that so that it can ferment. And then this little cap, this little dome, dome cap, it has a reservoir in here, and you put water in it, and that's to let the gases, you know, get out to let it burp itself. 
um, and I'm going to carefully set this back over here. So you do that um, so that you don't have to burp it. So we're going to see. Okay, since we have, and Debbie says yes, all the food has to be below the liquid. So since I'm feeling good about this salsa recipe that is now self-fermenting, it is now lacto-fermenting and making its own lactic, lactic acid, I thought, let's go ahead and ferment some pickles. And because Alyssa loves them, loves pickles so much, I mean, I'm serious, she has eaten all of the pickles that I, that I made for her. Since she loves them so much, she, this will be a great test for her. So I have heard people say that fermented anything, like fermented pickles versus pickled pickles, that the fermented ones are way better. Um, I don't know, I've just heard a lot of pros, pros for fermented versus versus the pickled. So we're gonna make some fermented pickles. Well, we're gonna get them started anyway. So what we're gonna start with is some super, super fresh cucumbers. Now these are fresh out of the garden. I do wanna show you all this one though and see if anybody has any ideas. So this is a cucumber, right? That's a normal cucumber. We have in the same area of the garden, I have a prolific cucumber bushes or vines, whatever. And then I have right next to them, I've got spaghetti squash, which I found out a little too late that you're not supposed to plant them that close to each other, but oh well. But then what is that? That is not, it's got the skin like a cucumber, but it's the color of the spaghetti squash that are living next to it. So, hmm, I'll be cutting into this not tonight because we don't have time to investigate this. But yeah, what is that? Because it's not a spaghetti squash and yet it doesn't look like a cucumber. Okay. Next thing I've learned, which I think is number three in this adventure, is, and I've never done this before, anything like this cucumber, like a cucumber, zucchini, anything like that, before you are, but one, okay, Debbie says cross-pollinated, but one? It just made one? I cannot wait. We're not going to do it tonight because I'll get totally distracted. I'll do it soon, though. Um, but I did learn in this process, and I had never done this before, that any anytime you're doing something like this you need to cut off the bloom end so the bloom end can make it get mushy faster the way you tell what which end is the bloom end so here's a cucumber i picked these i personally picked these so that's the end that was on the stem that's where i cut it off the stem that makes this the bloom end i did see on another website um actually you're supposed to cut off more than that i think they said like a fourth of an inch um so, yeah, so I did not know, I did not know that you needed to cut off the bloom end. Um, it said for any kind of these, any of these kind of processes, that if you don't cut off the bloom end, it can make it get really mushy really fast. Um, yeah, um, and I'm also going to be doing slices and spears. I personally like, because this thing is huge, so this um, fermenting, container that I'm putting this in is probably two quarts maybe I mean it's pretty big I'll set it here so y'all can watch it fill up but I like pickle slices Alyssa likes pickle spears so I'm gonna make some of some of both in here so we're just gonna continue to fill this up with fresh cucumbers this is another nice thing about having your own um, you know about having your own garden um, one is you always have, you know, the freshest vegetables on hand. Yeah, and Debbie says she always cuts off both ends. So that was another thing they said was if you didn't know, like if you weren't sure if it was the, um, if you were not sure if it was the bloom end, then just go ahead and cut off both ends. But I mean, it, it makes sense. Like I just did that accidentally, um, you know, went ahead and cut off the other end. But yeah, so yeah. Okay, so here are some spears. Let's put a few more spears in here for Alyssa. So how many of you have fermented versus pickling? Because I know several of you do pick I know several of you do pickles. And I even got some pickle, I got some Mrs. Wages pickle seasoning that I'm gonna use for the next batch. Um for Casey that's a spicy pickle because she likes the spicy pickles. Okay, let me see. I think that's all. I think that's all I'm going to put in there. I've got a little bit more room, but I have to be able to get the plunger 
down. So I think I'm going to stop with that. Now, is this, can you all see this? Because I'm getting ready to explain the plunger part of it. Can everybody see? You at least need to be able to see from here up. So for right now, we've got um, some cucumber slices. And then we have some cucumber spears because that's the way Alyssa likes them. And let's face it, oh, back on the salsa real quick. Oh, Debbie says she tried, but she just didn't monitor like she should have. Uh, Melissa says yes. So, Melissa, I'll be like, you know, bending your ear on Tuesday to find out more about it. Mary says yes. Um, Alyssa loves the pickles. She Again, she loved the muffins until um, until she saw me putting, um, until she saw me shredding some more zucchini. The salsa, Bo, let's see, Alan loved it. John loved it. Alan doesn't know it has zucchini in it. He doesn't know it has zucchini in it. John was suspicious, but he still didn't figure it out either. John loved it. Alan loved it. He went back for seconds. Casey and I loved it. We absolutely loved it. Um, Alyssa took one bite, and I took a picture, and I'm going to share it with the recipe. She looks like we were trying to poison her. Not kidding. It's a terrible, terrible, horrible face. And Bo, Casey had made hers into a taco salad. Bo literally stole the tacos, the rest of the taco salad from Casey. And I also have a picture of her. <sighs> so she loved it. Okay. But since we know Alyssa likes pickles, she's going to be the true test for this because Bo eats almost anything. I eat, unless it's cottage cheese or raisins, I eat it. Um, John eats most everything or he'll at least try it. Alan's kind of picky, but because Alyssa's our most picky eater, we're using her as this taste tester. So we've got um, cucumbers. Then we're going to add dill because this is going to be a dill pickle recipe. So we're going to add pl plenty of fresh dill, like to the point that I might take a couple of these spears back out. Let's take a couple of these spears back out and push some dill um, farther down in here, just to make sure we've got plenty. Okay, I'm going to kind of get that on there, and there's some more dill. Okay, so we've got fresh dill, so we've got cucumbers, fresh dill. Then I'm going to add... Oh, some garlic. So I'll push a couple of these down in there too. So this is just fresh peeled garlic and I've got four cloves. I don't want to overwhelm Alyssa. And Sarah says, I want to try this with our local farms cucumber. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't want to overwhelm Alyssa. So I'm just going to put four cloves of garlic in here. Okay, and then I'm going to add, because I did have this in Alyssa's um, original um, the pickled pickles. I had added coriander to it, so I'm going to add coriander to this. Oh, and I better talk fast. And I'm going to add just a little bit of um, peppercorns. Okay, so we've got that. Okay, then here comes the fermenting part. So I already made, I already made a brine um, with Himalayan, pink Himalayan sea salt. And I'm going to fill this up. It's cooled off, by the way. And I'm going to fill this up until it is over the vegetables. It's just so dang pretty, too. Dang it, it's pretty. Okay, then this is the cool part. So here is, this, is the top part of this gadget that I'm talking about. And you do not have to have anything this fancy. This one is a chew a -me fermentation kit. You do not have to have anything this fancy. I saw all kinds of crocs. I saw mason jar lids that have little spouts sticking out of them for the burping, I guess. Um, and then you just tighten this ring on here. The ring is to hold this weighted part down. So you don't put it on there super tight, but then when you release this, see how that plunger, see how that weight at that plunger, it's gonna push all of that down so now everything that's below the water line, so everything that's below the water line, that is all hopefully is going to lacto ferment. This one has this little reservoir that again, three years ago, I was like, what the heck is that even for? What is that even for? I had no clue what it was for. Now I know this little reservoir, let me grab some water. Now I know this little reservoir is for um, letting it burp itself. So I'm just going to take a little bit of water and I'm going to pour it in the reservoir, not too much. So now I've got 
the plunger is holding this down. The ring is holding the plunger on. This little dome thing sits on top. And then the water reservoir is to let this burp so that when the lactic acid is building up that it will burp itself and release the gases. Okay, y'all wish me luck. By next Sunday, it'll be time to try these. So we'll be able to try the, um, the fermented salsa and the fermented pickles. We'll be able to try both of those next Sunday. I am super pumped, super, super pumped, super excited. Um, if it kills me, y'all get to see that live next Sunday. I don't think it will. I really don't think it will. Um, but y'all get to see that live next Sunday. Yeah. So we will try them then and I will try my best not to try them before next Sunday because I want to try them live with y'all because you know what fun is it if they're gross? What fun is it to do it by myself? Nobody cares if I do it by myself. So we will try them live together. Um, and I promise we will get these up. We will get these posted just as quickly as we can. Poor little Casey and I are working our fingers to the bone trying to keep trying to get all this, you know, caught up and everything. Um, yep, y'all have a blessed week too. So if you were watching this on YouTube, that's youtube.com. Search if you have an egg. Just let that next video roll over. I promise it is fun. Good night, John. I never even saw you come on here. Um, but let that next video roll over. I promise you will enjoy it. And pretty, 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 please subscribe or maybe comment comment um, and click that little bell so that you will know the next time um, that a video is posted so that you'll already be you'll already be notified next thing I have to do is to take a picture of these two and tell the cleaning text the cleaning lady and say that's not dirty dishes from tonight okay leave them alone stay away stay away from them but y'all have a great evening I hope you enjoyed this and hopefully fingers crossed hopefully fingers crossed next week we will be tasting some excellent salsa and some even better pickles. So I will see you all next time. You'll have a great evening and have a great week. Stay dry out there. Good night.